don't we? We love this place. We love Miguel, right? We love each other, don't we? You guys remember last summer we uh, had a sermon series. We were talking about this body and, and, and who we were. We talked about that we were um, the body of Christ. Different members, many parts. At one point we talked about being living stones. That God was building up in us a spiritual house. And that we're stones being built by him. A holy priesthood, a, a, a royal nation. We talked about being the bride. Do you remember that one? That we were having loving union with Christ. Intimate, loving, personal relationship. That we're his bride. That he gave his life for us. And we talked about being a family. Being a family. Particularly a family on mission. Not just any family, not just a family that just grows and loves each other, but a family that is on mission for God. That we are a family of kind of missionary servants. That God is our father, that we are his children. Jesus is our brother and we walk in his way. What is that way? That he, was, he walks the way of being a servant. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others. And so we are a family. God unites us in that way. Jesus, our brother leads us in the way of being servants with each other. And then we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And we're not filled with the Holy Spirit just to feel good, but we're filled with the Holy Spirit because He sends us. That we are a sent people. Do you remember that Sunday we talked about being a sent people and all of a sudden missionaries showed up out of nowhere who were going to Czechoslovakia that afternoon? Yeah. We are a family of missionary servants. A family. A loving community. And, and then... And then uh, we also, over the course of the year, have talked about being a gospel-centered family on mission. That our identity is not in our name, but rather in the name of Jesus. Amen. That God was good. That God is gracious. That God is glorious. That God is generous. That we don't have to fear others. We don't have to be in control. We don't have to else look elsewhere for our satisfaction. And that we don't have to cling to what we have because God is so generous. And every Sunday we are preaching the gospel to ourselves and hopefully every, every Monday, every Tuesday when you're doing a devotional, when you're reading God's word, when you're listening to a song, hopefully you like me are preaching the gospel to your own soul. Do you do that? Yeah. Like, man, I need you Jesus. I need you today just like I needed you yesterday. And there's a new gospel message. There's a new little transformation that happens in your heart. And we're being renewed day by day by day. So we're a gospel-centered family on mission. And so over the course of the year, we invited you guys to take a, a peak survey. How many of you had the chance to do that? I know not everybody in the room had a chance, but I know a majority of you did. And so thank you for doing that. That was way back in January. And, and one of the three things that came up in score high, in terms of your experience at Relevant, God bless you, I should pause. That was some, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. May all the demons come out of you. And your sneezes. I mean, that's why we said it, right? That's what was happening. That's the tradition. Like, every time she sneezes, it's like, oh, God's blessing her. More junk is coming out. So, you have any more left? Because when I sneeze in the morning, it's like 10 in a row. There is so much demonic stuff happening in me. I know that's how I'm Like, seriously, now my family's going to think of it in old terms. If I start sneezing in the morning, I don't have allergies. But it's like 20 to 25 in a row. It's, anybody else? It's ridiculous. And God forbid I am driving. Like, it is nuts. And Allison the whole time is in the passenger seat. She's like, do you want me to drive? I'm like, you? no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm like, no, just pull over. Grab the wheel. Pull me over and, and get me out of the car. So God bless you, Lisa. Thank you. Um, there might be one more. Thank we'll, you. we'll all be on top of it with you. So there... There were three things in the peak survey that you specifically acknowledged as an experience you were having that was indeed very positive. Um, and those three things were vision alignment. You felt like your experience were relevant. Um, and, and, and what was happening here, that there was a high level of vision alignment. We all got it. We all get it. That what God wants us to do, that we are indeed a family of missionary servants. That we're being sent by God to proclaim his gospel as servants. And so there was a high vision alignment. And then there was a high level of trust in the spiritual leadership of the church. This was your reflection back to us. 
that you trusted the spiritual leadership. You trusted those who were leading, those who were not only leading, but also the next part, stewarding, stewarding the finances of the church. And, and these basically communicated to us that you trust what's happening here. That you trust the leadership. You trust us with your gener generosity. You trust us on how we're leading and what, how we hear God and if we're praying about what God's asking us to do here. And then there were three things that you wanted more of. You wanted more of. More, please. <laughs> Local missions, discipleship, and loving community. Now, I always want to argue against the loving community one. Not that you don't want more of it, but I feel like, boy, one of the things you guys are amazing at yeah. is authentic loving relationships. I mean, we, as a church, I would brag about us and I would put us up against any other church anywhere for the kind of loving community that exists here. But you wanted more of it. And uh, to be honest, I've noticed over the last couple months that you guys are ridiculously hanging out together way too much. <laughs> way too often. I see these Facebook threads and pictures and places and things you want to do with each other. And I am thoroughly disgusted by how much you want to spend time with one another. So you wanted more of it and you gave yourself more of it. Um, and, and you wanted more discipleship. You wanted a clearer path in terms of how, where am I now? Where, where can I get to, Pastor? Where, where I'd like to grow continually. And I'd like to almost even say, hey, I need a predictable pattern of growth in my life. And I'm putting words in your mouth. But that's something that we interpreted in seeing. And, you know, a lot of you have responded to the Empower Women's Program that we introduced to you a couple weeks ago through the ladies from Main Street Alliance Church. And they came and preached and then presented that program. And again, it's about, discipleship is about having predictable patterns in our life. In fact, if you want to be a good spiritual mother or father, or you want to be just a good parent in general, some of the things that helps us to grow in our faith, helps us to grow into mature believers, helps us to grow to mature people, is having predictable patterns. And when you're a spiritual father or mother, or when you're just a father or mother in general, one of the things you want to keep in mind is are you creating healthy, predictable patterns of love, of discipline, of freedom, in whom you're discipling, and who you're parenting. Does that make sense? That's a freebie, by the way. It's not on my notes. One of the healthy things to do if you're a parent is to create predictable patterns of love, of discipline, and I'm not talking punitive, I'm talking about empowering someone, corrective stuff so they can empower to be more, and then freedom. We need freedom in our life to actually see if these things are working. We gave Maximo some freedom this weekend. We dropped our boys up at the Adirondacks for two weeks. Maximo's 10, Hudson's 14. Tanya and Emerson are also up there. The first night after we dropped him off, the next night we got a phone call. Max cut himself with a knife. We gave him some freedom. He had a pocket knife. He was whittling, whittling a, a marshmallow stick, and he looks like he came down here and sliced his thigh. Had to be taken to the ER with 11 stitches. So as a parent, we are five and a half hours away. We're not going. And they're not asking us to come. So we love him. We've disciplined him. And now he's got freedom. And so uh, it turns out everything's gone well. We still haven't seen that little guy. And I can't wait to see him next Saturday. It's going to be another week. we got 11 stitches. And he's off and running, the nurse says. And she's bringing him back to cleaning it. Jesus does that in our lives, right? He loves us, he disciplines us, and he gives us freedom. And so you said you wanted more of this. Local missions, discipleship, loving community. In terms of local missions, we said, hey, we want to go out. We want to do more. We want to reach others. And you're doing this. One of the things I love about you, and again, I'll brag about you often, is that not only do you have loving relationships with people here in this room, but you have loving relationships with people outside of this room that you are engaged intentionally in living missionally out towards others. And I love that about you. I love that Bob and Lorraine have taken up bowling to go and be intentional disciple makers. Give it up for Bob and Lorraine. I love that. I love that there's other people in this room that are trying to figure out how do I reach people in my community. I love that Dawn Arnone opens up her house every Wednesday night. Yes. And there's like 25 to 30 people there. 
And everybody in that room, and, and what they're doing now, what we're doing now, because I go, is every other Wednesday night. One Wednesday night, we throw a party, no Bible lesson. It's just invite as many people as you can invite into this environment to experience love. And then the next week, we do a Bible lesson with a party. And so last week, we had like, what, five new people, at least. And um, there were people that they met in a group, and they had brought their older son because he needed something that this group had provided. And because we had provided to other kids in this group, this family wanted to be a part of that. Right. And they came in and asked me, drilled me about all the questions. They thought we were like an official program on Wednesday night <laughs> for this type of family who has children who with just needs extra support and love and care. I'm like, no, man, we're just family. Like, this is it. We just do family. We just believe in eating around the table and listening to each other and then knowing God's story and then celebrating. And we had someone had a birthday party. It's like, do you do this for every birthday party? I'm like, I have no idea what we do. Dawn and Dee find out if it's a birthday and they bring stuff and we sign a card and we just follow their lead. This is no official program. No program, just family. And you can't program this stuff in because you program it in, it just falls apart sometimes. So I love that you're looking for ways to reach out locally. Well, this is kind of what's been happening over the last year and what God has been speaking to us and what you've been speaking to us. And so leadership team's been processing all of this. And so last November, last December, we got a letter from True Life Church. Pastor Chris Francis is the pastor there. Sent me and Jeff an email. At the end of the email, he said something like this. If you guys don't want to listen to any of this, it's on you. Like, as a buddy to buddy, he's like, I'm making this offer, but if you don't want to read into any of this, then, you know, it's on you guys. And so actually, Chris sent us an email. We didn't respond for him for two weeks later. And then one night, I was hanging out my Christmas lights along my fence, called Chris up, and finally responded to his email. Because his email was a proposal, an offer, for a true life and relevant to merge together and become one church. So, December happened, November was happening, and we brought this email to the attention of our leadership team and this offer from True Life and from Chris. <laughs> and actually, that was part of the reason why we had you guys take the peak survey. We really wanted to know and define what was happening here at Relevant. Not just what we perceived to be happening, but what was going on. What you saw was good and what maybe you thought we needed more of. And so over the last couple of months, we have been talking to Chris, with myself, Pastor Jeff, We've been talking to our governing board. Chris has been talking to his governing board. And we've been asking three questions. Let me see if I'm on track. We've been asking these three questions in order to decide whether or not we could do this. Could we do this better together? Could we reach the next 200 people better together or separately? Could we reach the next 200 people better together? Now, you didn't say you wanted that. But in terms of what we want as a church, as a body, we want to advance the kingdom. We want to grow. Matter of fact, I was sitting around with a bunch of my friends yesterday, talking about this Sunday, talking about what's happening in my life. None of them come here. And one of them said to me, Anthony, you know, uh, you, you, he said kind of like, the, it was a girl. She said something to the effect, like, what is it about your church and your churches? Um, because the church I go to, like, they don't care if they're you know, a certain number or this. I'm like, oh yeah, no, no, not us. Like, we love what we have, but we are really ambitious about seeing other people join this thing kind of called the kingdom of God. Yeah. That we believe it's not only our ambition, but it's a holy ambition, and that it's something that God has asked us to do and be about doing. And so we're about doing this. So we asked the question, could we reach the next 200 people better together or separately? Another question we asked, was would Monmouth County be better served? Would the local communities be better served if we were to do this together with True Life Church or separately? And third, could the kingdom of God be further extended? Now let me give you a little background for some of those who may not know exactly. Well, there's two groups of people in this room that I'm talking to and I'm well aware of. There are the people who have been here before me, before I came to Relevant. Would you raise your hand if you've been to... You've been at Relevant Church before me. Please raise your hand. I really need you to participate. Okay. Keep them up. Delani. Delani. Don't mess with me today, Delani. <laughs> Who has been here after I got here? Raise your hand. 
Same day, Dennis. No, no, I know you're still here. But I thank you, Monty, for still being here. I appreciate it. There are people in the room who cannot raise their hand because they did leave after I got here. You can put your hands down. So we're about a 50-50 kind of split. And so before I even got here, Relevant had a dream and a vision to plant churches. And one of the first churches they planted was True Life Church. And what we're going to give you today after the service is a four-piece, four-page piece written by Chris Francis. Um, we're going to put that in your hands today. Describing his journey through that God's calling him to plant Relevant with Jeff, and then God's calling him to plant True Life, and then where God's calling him now, and what God's calling him to do, and what he dreams about doing with us. So Chris and Jeff came to Monmouth County from California. They were both from the area to plant relevant church. And then Chris, three years after the launch, almost to the day, planted True Life. True Life's doing great. True Life has about 175 adults on a Sunday morning. True Life has a good kids ministry. They have depth and a feeling of robustness in their volunteer teams. And so for Chris to extend an invitation to us, sort of like, huh, didn't see that one coming. So when we ask these three questions, I want to give you a phrase that is significant to me. So when they're significant to you, write them down sometimes. When both churches answer that we can do this better together, it almost seems unfaithful to do anything but merge. When you answer these, when you ask these three questions, you're like, could we do this better together? Both churches. Because although Chris threw out the proposition, there were many times during this last year he was not thinking it would happen, or he didn't think it maybe would be the best thing to do. But back and forth, and we went back and forth for both parties. At the end of the day, this was kind of the sentiment, at least for me. When both churches answer better together, it seems unfaithful to do anything but to merge. And there's another sentence I have in my mind. There's a lot of explanations also that we're not going to cover here on Sunday morning, this Sunday at least. But it seems also that even though there's a lot of explanations and a lot of reasons, that God is clearly behind this movement. That God is clearly behind this movement. So what does this look like? What does this mean? A merger means that relevant folds into true life. A merger means that relevant folds into true life. The name, the positions, the board, the titles, the salaries, the bank accounts, all folding and surrendered to, you notice I didn't put true life there? <laughs> Very strategic. <laughs> Very spiritual. <laughs> to God. At the end of the day, this doesn't belong to us. At the end of the day, none of this belongs to us. Everything we have belongs to God. We're only his stewards. It's a core value of ours, deep, deep down inside. <coughs> and so, this means the name, the positions. This means Pastor Anthony will no longer be Pastor Anthony. I still am a reverend, so you can call me Holy Reverend Anthony. <laughs> and Pastor Jeff, he will no longer be Pastor Jeff. Anthony and Jeff are relinquishing our positions as we fold into true life. We're completely surrendering and submitting all that we have and all that we are under the governing board of True Life Church. Um, by the way, this decision is not just mine. Not just Jeff's, but it involves Jeff and June Anderson and Vinnie Leone, um, others, significant people in the past, the governing board members that were pr prior to this, like the a Letts were in on this conversation early on, um, and, and others involved in this. And then the district, our denomination, has given their approval of this. They wouldn't have approved it uh, if they didn't think it was uh, part of that. Salary. So I'll no longer be receiving a salary. Jeff will no longer be receiving a salary. Um, we're saying, yeah, we believe in this. And like I told Jeff all over, we're going to become like you. We're just going to be another, just a peasant in the kingdom. No, you're not peasants. You're a royal priesthood. We're going to say, scratch that from the video. We won't repeat that one. Um, here's the um, the name. The positions, the board, the titles, the salaries, the bank accounts, all folded into and surrendered to Christ. Our identity is in Christ. 
Um, like I said earlier, there are many explanations, but all are secondary to the fact that we feel God is clearly <coughs> behind the momentum. Um, can I read you some verses? Let me read you some verses that have been significant for me. Isaiah 43, 19 says this, See, I am doing a new thing, and now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And until we all reach unity... Yeah, let me pause there. Sorry, Jeff, I went too fast. See, I am doing a new thing, God says in Isaiah 43, 19. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I thought that was an interesting line. That God's like, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? And this is part of our process. And this is actually part of what we're inviting you to process. So I might be jumping back and forth my notes and some thoughts. We're going to be here at Relevant, as Relevant Church, here in Ocean Township High School, through the month of August to the very end. We're going to give you a calendar of what's happening every Sunday for the next couple of weeks. Who's speaking, where they're speaking, what's happening. There's going to be a Sunday in the middle that we're going to not have church here. And we're going to invite you all to go to True Life. We're going to take a class trip together. Okay? Bring your brown bag lunch. okay, Or go to the deli before school starts. And then we're going to go down there to True Life for a Sunday morning. Tracy, you have your hand up and I will... Yeah, thank you very much. A lot of assumptions we don't want to make today. And some things I might miss. And Jeff is available to raise his hand anytime and interrupt me. We're not done yet with the talk, but True Life is in Brick, New Jersey. And uh, Jeff pulled up, do you have those pictures or no? You just were telling me about them. No. Um, so Jeff told me some interesting things. And you know what, Jeff, just come up here for a second and, and let me finish this one thought so I don't yeah, yeah, forget yeah. it. You can stay. And that is, <laughs> that is the idea of perceiving it. You and I go through this personally, right? Attempting to perceive what God is doing in your life. I mean, isn't this what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks? discerning the seasons in our life, discerning whether God's putting limits on our life and whether or not those are God's grace in disguise. We've been talking a lot about discerning because I personally have been going through a season of whether or not is this indeed what we perceive God is doing. And let me say this. Sometimes you're spot on and sometimes it seems like God was doing something, but maybe you were just a little off. Let me say this too. Our vision, and I'm going to get to it a little further, our vision is this, is not just to close Relevant Church, but our vision is to do it better together. Our vision and Chris's vision is to unite with him, to close, to unite, and then to relaunch. The whole vision behind this is that we would relaunch another campus here in Monmouth County that is more robust that is larger, that is indeed a fuller expression of the experience that we have articulated in our peak survey. You said loving relationships, you said discipleship, you said local missions. We're saying we can do this better together in conjunction with the body of Christ that is and has come from us here in Monmouth County. There's no timeline. We're not saying 12 months. We're not saying 18 months. We're not saying 24 months. We have specific benchmarks that we need to accomplish and get to. So we're not going to say 12 months and that will be what it, when it is. But rather we're saying there are specific benchmarks we want to accomplish as a team and with the goal of launching another campus here in Monmouth County. So just so we're clear, and I don't think I've mentioned that yet, that that is the vision. That is the dream. That's what we're trying to imagine. And that's why we've said yes to this. So, real quick. <clears throat> Go ahead, brother. Anthony didn't mention, and it's important, because for a lot of us, our small groups here are very life-giving. So our small groups are going to continue. What's going to change is our Sunday morning gathering. Instead of being here, we'll be in brick. That's scary, right? <laughs> With True Life. Now, I'm going to take some of the fear out of your minds real quick. Brick is huge. Now, if you live in this area like me, how often do you go to Brick? Never. Never. Right? Brick is massive. It stretches as far south as Normandy and Chadwick Beach. I mean, it goes way down. But here's what most people don't know. It goes way up. 
the north tip of brick is parallel, right? So think latitude, is on the same parallel as sea girt. Did you know that? No. North Brick, what's called North Brick, and Brick Memorial High School, the auditorium where True Life currently meets, is on the exact same parallel as Manasquan Beach. So this is not like, oh my gosh, it's so far. I checked my map app last night, and from Eatontown to the actual high school to the location, so from 36 and Garden State Parkway, it's 13 minutes on my app. Right, so I'm just saying that to uh, you know help settle us all a little bit. Brick Memorial High School. Here's another little fact. How many of you like data, data and facts? The high school where, where Two Life meets is 2,600 feet from Monmouth County. <laughs> I found that out last night. 2,600 feet from Monmouth County. So um, this isn't like, oh my gosh, we're going south, 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 south. No, it's actually on the same parallel as Seagirt and Manasquan. It's not far. So that's, that's an answer to yeah. Trace. Just to kind of paint the bigger picture. Yeah. Great. That's cool. Carpool fun. Carpool yeah. fun. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, Attain to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. This is part of our goal. This is part of our vision. And then Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12 says this. Your people will rebuild ancient ruins and will raise up the age old. You will be called the repairer of broken walls, the restorer of streets with dwellings. And then John chapter 12 verse 23 26. And I think we only have 24 says, very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. For whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My, my Father will honor the one who serves me. Here's the big ask from Chris. You're going to read this in what we give you. And it's to unite. Be here. This is we ask. Do, do we have another slide, Chris, or no? No, no, Jeff, we don't have anything. Here, here's what Chris is asking for us. No slides with this one. Number one, to unite with true life. Will we become one with true life? To become one community. Number two, to build authentic relationships. I said earlier, you guys are great at this. And Jeff mentioned earlier, too. One of the things we negotiated, and one of the things, it wasn't a big negotiation. It wasn't a Time Warner cable merger. <laughs> They're even doing mergers. The whole world's doing mergers, because everybody knows you can do it better together. Is that we keep our community groups. And they, their response was, if they're healthy, then yes. You know, we want them to keep going. So your community group, that's okay. We'll keep on happening. Okay? And if you're leading that, you will keep on leading. But you will be under new leadership. And that might even be Pastor Jeff. Because Chris and Jeff have talked about him possibly leading the community groups. Okay, So you might even continue to be under Pastor Jeff's leadership. Um, but that's a welcome thing. And, um, and so you'll keep that going. We want you to have that. We know that that's valuable to you. We want that. We've created those. We've created space and environment. You have done that. And so we want to keep those going. Um, to reconcile. So he's asking us to build one community, to build authentic relationships, to reconcile. Now you might like, what do I got to reconcile? Yeah, you know, if you come after me, you might not have anything to reconcile with true life. But if you come before me, there may be some things you need to reconcile with true life. And part of what God does when he creates movement and momentum and places and moves his people. He always moves his people towards reconciliation, doesn't he? I mean, he's a God who reconciles us. And don't you hate that when he puts you in positions with people that you used to have bad blood with or a little riff or a little tiff or just a little thought in your mind and it's like, boom. So, isn't it, I think, in my perception, yeah, this is good. Anytime God moves us into positions of having to reconcile relationships, there's an opportunity here. To dream to pray and to imagine what God could do 
by two communities coming together. This is new charter territory for many of the churches in the United States. But, you, but this is actually happening more and more often. I read a book called Better Together, and there are stories of mergers, and you know, there's stories of churches of 4,000 people who are coming together and merging. I can't imagine being a pastor of a church of 4,000 saying, you know what, I'll give it all up. Let's merge. That's what's happening. Pastors of joining churches, they're deciding, you know what, that guy in that church, that lead pastor, has the skill set to take this to the next place and reach the next 200. They're talking about 1,000 people for Christ. And they're merging together. Not because there's something wrong here or something better there, but rather because God is calling them to do it. So there is a movement of mergers happening. There's actually a couple of churches in Asbury Park looking to merge that I'm aware of. There's something about this that is saying, hey, we can do this better together. Are we willing to lay some things aside here? Here's what we're asking of you. And we'll have some, maybe some time here. We're asking for you to be here. Would you be here this summer? Be here. We're giving you a calendar. We're giving you the dates. And if you can be here, be here. We know as a leadership team, we've processed this for months. And we know this is new news to you. And forgive us if we get ahead of ourselves a little bit. It's only because it's been nine months since we've been incubating in this. And we're ready to have the baby. But you just found out you're having a baby. And you need some time to process this. So. Yeah. So we just, I'm asking you to be here. And I'm grateful we're laughing. Because there's great joy in this place. Yes. And I also know, here's the next thing. Trust us enough to process this. Okay, you're going to like the next one. But trust us enough to process this. You said you, you trust us already. Yes. And I've had lots of personal conversations with you. And I've been overwhelmed by the fact you said, Hey, Anthony, Allison, we trust you. Yes. Are you okay with this? You feel like we should do this? <coughs> then I'm, I'm okay with that too. And I'm, I'm a little like, no, no. Don't trust me that much, okay? But I love the relationship we have. It's authentic. It's genuine. You said that. If you trust me, trust our leadership team because I trust them. And they have your interest in mind. I always have. Um, the next thing, give yourself permission to feel what you feel about this. We're giving you permission to feel what you feel about this. You don't have to like this today. I'm okay with that. You could have a few choice words for us, and I'm okay with that. You could feel cruddy and grumpy and just, I don't like this. We give you permission to feel that. There's nothing bad about feeling those things. I have felt all those array of emotions. When Chris sent me that letter, the reason why he didn't hear back from me was I was like, who does he think he is? threw that letter off to the side in an email version, you know, just lingered over there, you know? And then when I got on the phone with him, I'm like, Chris, you know, if you would have said this, this, and this, you would have had me at hello. But you did it. You wrote the whole email all wrong. So I felt all the same ways that you're going to begin to feel. Even in terms of, well, what happens to this? What happens to us? Well, I like this place. I like where we're located. Wait, I live in Ocean. This is kind of like a dream come true, even though I never knew I would dreamt of this. This is really good. I like what this is for my ocean community. For those of you who live north of ocean, you're on our hearts. Oh, you have a little bit of a commute to make. I get it. I've been commuting 40 minutes to church every Sunday with four kids in tow. I have to buy them lunch every Sunday just to bribe them to not complain on the ride home. So this may cost you a little bit if you're bringing kids. But you know, all my kids have said, all my kids are for it. Not because they don't love you, because they see some of what is kind of the potential that can happen. And maybe younger kids are a little bit more innovative, a little bit more progressive, a little less scared of whatever risk might be involved. But we want to give you permission to feel what you feel. I hope that feels good to you. Here's some things we wrote down. Uh, we win with a fresh start. We win with a fresh start. Sometimes you just need a fresh start. I love what we have. And 
I think together, anybody will become better with joining up with us. One of my pictures of this, and here's, what, here's the next line, true life wins by gaining momentum. I think implicitly you're gonna figure out what you have to lose in this. What might die, use those words, in this process. What might feel like loss. True life has some things to risk as well. I envision it as kind of like a soccer team because I play that game or any other team sport. And all of a sudden, you know, the coach says, hey guys, we're merging with the CBA Academy. And you're like this low level, you know. And all of a sudden, another team comes in and the coach has just merged you with other players. And you're gonna be thinking, I thought I was the starting goalkeeper. Like, wait a second, like, I thought this was my position. I was ready to do this. And then there's these guys, but, but wait, I have friendships with so-and-so. You're, you're, not, you're saying there's other people that are gonna come in that are gonna maybe disrupt what's sort of happening here a little bit? I, I see there's some implicit, some interesting, some things we haven't fleshed out yet, risks for true life and inviting a whole group of people from another church to come in. So, but ultimately true life wins by gaining momentum. The body of Christ wins by getting stronger. Local communities will win with stronger, vibrant churches. And the kingdom of God wins through life-giving churches who make disciples. The kingdom of God wins through life-changing -church churches who make disciples. So our ask right now is to be here, process this, trust us in the process with us, and we give you permission to feel. I'm gonna tell you what my bigger ask will be. Maybe I shouldn't have said it yet, but I'm gonna ask you what my bigger ask will be, okay? It will be to do what Alice and I are committed to doing. And that is to stay through true life through the end of December, through the end of the year, without question, just to go through the whole process. See what it looks like. Look. At the end of the day, this is a vision statement. That we can do better together, that we can come together as one church and launch another campus in the future, would be awesome. We feel like we've got verification from this, from our district, from other peers who are for this, from the Holy Spirit to us. We feel like we've got verification. And the only next step is to go on the voyage. Like that's the only next step. When God gives you a vision, and he verifies it, the invitation is to go on a voyage. But not yet. I'm not asking you to say yes to that. What we're simply asking is would you be here, trust us in the process, and we give you permission to feel what you feel about this. Jeff and I, the rest of the leadership team, want to be available to you for any phone calls, any meetings, any meetups. We want to hear from each of you. We want to talk to each of you about this whole dream, this whole vision. One of the other things that we've talked about with True Life is that with Relevant Church, and the people of Relevant Church, that you would have the opportunity to give into a war chest. That you'd have the opportunity to give into something that would go specifically to launching a new campus. And so there is, uh, there is commitment, there is financial investment, there is a little bit of a plan and a strategy and a whole lot of trust. So, our ushers are gonna give out two pieces of paper to you. One is a letter from Chris to us, um, and the other is a calendar. On the back table uh, is a book called The Dangers of American Christianity, which Chris Francis has written. Um, he wrote it, um, and he's published it, and so this book is available to you for a donation. So there's a donation bucket there. I would recommend you getting the book. Allison's already picked it up and started reading it. I know Chris, love Chris, but I know this book will give me insight into who he is. So, everybody's asking me how I was doing today. 
I'm okay. I'm okay. But I'm concerned about each and every one of you. You have your own journey. You have your own story. God has led you to this place at Relevant Church. And I'm assuming you love it here. And so, we're concerned for you. So this, this moment here is not just a coach getting up and cheering you on and saying, let's do this, let's take the hill. I could do that. It would be very easy for me to do. But we want to have just an honest, authentic, transparent conversation about this. Pastor Jeff's going to preach next week. And then the next week afterwards, Pastor Chris will be here. You can miss Pastor Jeff, that's fine. But don't miss Pastor Chris. Thank you, Jane. If Jane Newman laughs at your joke and she's the first one, you know it's a good one. You know it's good. So you can miss next week. Don't miss the 15th. And on the 22nd, we're going to a road trip. Can we meet here and then go to the Good question, Josette. No, I think we'll just meet there. Unless you want to take a bus, a party bus, and really do this well. I think we'll just meet there. But I know Amy Negron, I know Lisa Poulos would love to carpool with you. I know they'd love to take advantage of the 13 mile drive um, to uh, 13, 13 minute, 13 minute drive. Um, I'll take a few questions, Trina. You know, there's a lot of stuff recorded and on the website, on the YouTube channel. Um, I know, I would say I'm better live. Um, and you know, listen, you, there's a suggestion box at True Life, and you can say, hey, I'd like to hear Anthony preach more often, um, whatever happens. So, so, yes, thank you for your kind words. And there's going to be a lot of what we've missed. Things will change, yeah. Well, I want to say what's super important is that True Life is letting us keep our small groups, our community groups up here where they currently are. And there's nothing stopping you guys from inviting Pastor Anthony and Allison. They come. They'll come. To so your you house? Wanna, yeah, you come preach? to my house. Not All to right. preach. Not to preach, but to be part of that community group. <clears throat> All over and it. then we can hear your wonderful voice. <laughs> sure. So the, the little bit of the shift in mission, you're going to hear this in Chris's letter at the end of it. He really articulates well kind of uh, where he's going and what he's been processing. And so let me get, let me take a shot at it. And then it's simply this, so the new dream, the new dream, and, and, and based on a successful experience that Chris has had with True Life, is that we would launch, and, and, and based on past experience, so we're looking back, learning on our past, what we could have done better in terms of planting True Life, even though I wasn't there, I've had enough conversations with everybody, and I've been a part of enough church plants, looking back on all of our complete experience in the past, we're saying that we can leverage our resources, time, energy, money, people better by launching instead of another church plant, but rather a campus that exists under one church umbrella. So the goal here is to merge with True Life, launch one, but not just one, two campuses, and then another campus, all with a different expression of its faith based on sort of the local context. So perhaps launching a campus in Asbury Park. That would have a different expression, right? Depending on sort of the local mission feel and experience that it would if you planted it, you know, in Titan Falls, right? So you'll see at the end of Chris's, it's a, it's a vision that is based on sort of past experience and saying, hey, we can leverage our resources, time, energy, and effort and people better if we do this together and launch several campuses under one umbrella. So that's a little bit of... So gaining more strength as one, mm -hmm. and then having more strength relaunching, yeah. but under that bigger umbrella. Right. So it's more protected spiritually that way, too. Yeah, more protected spiritually, mm -hmm. and financially, okay. yeah, and resource-wise, resource right? Uh, one of the things, you know, Chris talks about is, is, as a leader of True Life, not feeling like even, and I'll let him speak to this, but maybe he could have done better at connecting with us, you know? And we agree we could have done better with connecting with them. And so we're learning from past. We're looking back in order to go forward here in terms of this, yeah. We're a little bit of a, yeah, slingshot around the moon, around the sun, 
There's a weird Star Trek video out there I was telling Jeff Sullivan about where these geeky guys go and they go back around the sun in order to go back in time. And so we're a little bit like, we're going to go back a little bit and we're going to use that momentum to slingshot us forward to parts unknown. Dolores. No, no. So, so think in terms of campus like Rutgers University. So I'm just going to Rutgers. I learned a lot about campuses. There's Bush Campus, Livingston Campus, and there's all these campuses. So the campus would be the same structure of, as, as a local church, different expression. There would be a campus pastor who would be there. Uh, that campus pastor could preach. But no, we have no intention at this moment of putting Chris Francis on a live screen and uh, having him preach to us via satellite. However, in those models... The reason why they do that is because they have a very strong teaching pastor and a very strong teaching gift that they want that to be the expression of what's happening in their other campuses. But rather like a university where there's one big university, you know, under a big administration, but there's a campus, you know, in different parts of the area. So like, you know, Kane University has a campus down in Stafford Township, right? There's university of campuses in other places. It doesn't mean it's like via satellite or live, but rather it's an extension of what they can offer in this location, but they want to offer the same thing in another location. Does that make sense a little bit? We're going to have more time for Q&A. During Chris's talk, we're going to build in some Q&A time there. Okay, That might happen on the 15th, or it might happen after the leaders of both churches get together. You're going to see there's a leaders luncheon that some of you will be invited to, but we'll have Q&A. So obviously we can talk around this forever. We would love to. And that's actually why we planned out the whole summer to have this be kind of our topics. Look, here's what I know. I know that no matter what happens in all of this, that at the end of the day, God is transforming you into the likeness of Christ. There's a lot of details you've got to figure out. There's a lot of details I've got to figure out. Like, I no longer have a salary or health benefits at the end of August. From September to then, I'm not sure what's happening. There's a lot of that stuff you have to figure out. Well, not you, me. There's stuff you've got to figure out, whether you're going to commute or not, whether you're going to go to your friends, whether you're going to drive the extra distance, how you're going to explain this to your family. All these things you've got to figure out. But here's what I know about you and me at the end of the day, that God's mission in your life is to transform you into the likeness of Christ. And he will use this next two months, if you stay, to transform you into the likeness of Christ. You'll look back and say, okay, I grew there. I grew at the end of the day. And then if you stay through December, I guarantee you, you will grow in ways you've never grew before. Even if you leave after that, you will grow more into the likeness of Christ through these experiences than most other experiences. So are you up for that? Are you up for growing into the likeness of Christ? And at this point, this is what he has. This is what he's doing. We can tell it's a pull. He's just pulling us into this. So I invite you into that. Above everything else, trust Him in the process. Pray through this process. You know, there's a reason why when Paul writes the letter to Ephesians, it's about the church, it's about unifying, it's about coming together. I think there's a darn good reason why his last chapter, he says, but you don't battle against flesh and blood, but you battle against principalities and against powers, against things unseen, not things seen. And so in and amongst what we're doing, if a church... If two churches are deciding to merge together and become one, other pastors are looking at them and be like, really? All my peers are like, are you okay with this? Their church, True Life, is going to come out of that service today. I'm not sure what their experience is going to be. So Chris is announcing this at True Life this morning. We're announcing it here. I'm not sure what their experience is going to be today. It's going to be something different. Change is always different. But here's what I know. At the end of the day, your soul is what God cares about and the lost souls of others. Transforming you into the likeness. And I know over the last nine months, I've been transformed, I think, more into his state. I believe in it. That it's happening. So, we love you. Jeff Sullivan, you're the last question because I love you more think, than anybody else in this room. I think God's really calling us to go take over true life. <laughs> we will scratch that from the recording. <laughs> we haven't quite told them that. So Jeff's going for a total takeover. And I'm kind of cool with that. So we have to have compassion of true life.
because they need us to survive. I think that's the bottom line. <laughs> Yes, it, last question, I said it was going to be Jeff, but if you do it in Scottish, then you can ask it. Scottish? Yeah, I like donuts. <laughs> I like donuts. <laughs> we will make sure whatever True Life has, they're serving up donuts. But listen, so let's stand, will you stand with me? We're going to wrap this up and continue the conversation. Mika, you got a song? Yeah. So Lonnie got his green card last week. <laughs> Best news of the week for me. That Delani got his green card. Woo! And Ivani's on her way. Woo! The same. Nobody knows you guys. But honestly, that's better news than a merger to me. Did you guys hear Justin talk this morning? Yes, it's a fire! You know, if we ever put Justin up here five years ago, it would have been like, oh, God, no. Who made that decision, right? But how much has this guy grown? So much. You know? Zach, Zach's back. Zach, I don't know if you know Zach, but he, he was the highlight of my morning, seeing that face. Zach's been here ever since Relevant started. So I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say. I want to know what Zach thinks about all this. So many things have happened. So many things are happening in your life. Nothing at relevant church has ever been wasted. Nothing. Amen. None of your energy, none of your efforts, none of your investment in someone else's life. Nothing has ever been wasted. Nothing got to us will ever go wasted in you or in your children. Nothing. So, be of good cheer. It's okay. God is still on the throne. And he's in control of everything. And one day we'll look back and be like, that was amazing times. You'll say, because we say this, that was the best place ever. <laughs> no matter what we did, I still like it like it was. Because we're, we love nostalgia. Nostalgia remembers better than it ever lived, but that's okay. So, I love everything God doing in your life. I love that we've been in each other's lives. And we'll continue to do that here in a unique way, in ways that no other churches that have ever done. In ways that, let me tell you, if you navigate this well, other churches and people and non-believers, God will use this for the kingdom in ways you never thought. Yep. The kingdom of God will advance because of your faithfulness, because of your risk, because of your trust. It's the only way it advances, by the way. Not because, not because all the cards are in our favor. It advances because we take risks and we trust in him who's able to do exceedingly more than we can ask or imagine. Amen. Amen. Hey, those books on the back, we want each of you to have one. If you can give a donation, great. Take one per family. But I want you to get to know Chris, all right? So please, take one, and we encourage you to do that. Give a donation of $7 is the cost of the book. If you want to give more, cover someone else's, that's great, all right? Chris asked me to sell his book months ago, and I said, no. <laughs> now I got no choice. So let's just sell them all. <laughs> Listen, want to talk to you this week? So please reach out. If a phone call is good enough, great. If not, let's go have lunch, coffee. Let's talk. I want to hear about you. We are committed to shepherding you through this journey. Whether it's at True Life or whether it's somewhere else. Yesterday I made several phone calls to other pastors, letting them know what was happening here so they were aware in case... Someone told them. I wanted them to know from me what we were doing. So talk to me. Talk to us. Don't run away. All right? Lean in. And I know God's got great things in store for all of us. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love for us that you died on the cross. You gave us it all so that we could have life. We pray that you would um, cover us, protect us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your presence during this time. 
Lord, heal us. We uh, surrender it all to you. And then we just ask for your anointing, your grace, your love. In this time, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful day, everybody.